This film is an introduction to sampling from cooling towers, hot and cold domestic water systems and spa pools, based on the techniques shown in film 2. When you're sampling from a water system, you need to first ensure that you understand how the system works so that you can identify the best place to take samples from. Remember that Legionella bacteria are most likely to be found in areas of warm, stagnant water where water treatment chemicals are least concentrated. You need to take care when sampling as some equipment can be in locations that are awkward to access and you should always take appropriate precautions to limit your exposure to aerosols from potentially contaminated water. Cooling towers can cause outbreaks of Legionnaire's disease. They can affect large numbers of people because of the volume of aerosol they produce and the distance it can travel. They must be rigorously maintained and the Health and Safety Executive guidance suggests that they should be tested at least quarterly for the presence of Legionella. An open circuit cooling tower transfers heat from water by direct contact between that water and a stream of air. This process causes some water to evaporate, which removes heat energy from the remaining water before it falls to the bottom of the tower and is collected in the pond. This water is then recirculated, reheated and used again. A closed circuit cooling tower or evaporative condenser cools the fluid by passing it through a bundle of metal tubes containing refrigerant. These are cooled by contact with water passing over them and against a stream of air that also causes some water to evaporate. Over 95% of the water droplets generated in cooling towers can be contained by drift eliminators. These are the last line of defence and reduce the release of potentially harmful aerosols into the atmosphere. In both systems, air is forced or drawn through the cooling tower and dirt and debris can be deposited in the water. Dirt, debris and the dissolved solids, which are concentrated by the process of evaporation, provide an ideal environment for Legion Ally to grow. Growth is most likely to occur in the warmest parts of the system near the heat exchanger rather than the cooling tower itself. For routine monitoring, you should establish whether the system is under control at all times. Samples should be taken when the risk would be expected to be greatest. This would normally be when biocide concentration is at its lowest, either just before the next dose is due or just after the tower has been switched on if it doesn't operate at night or weekends. In an outbreak, you should collect samples as soon as possible. Opening up the tower carries a risk, so the pumps and fans should be switched off. You must then wait for any aerosols to disperse. Meanwhile, you should review the paperwork, including the schematic of the water system, the risk assessments, the use of biocides, the water sampling schedule, and any recent microbiology results. If it is safe, inspect the cooling tower pond, pack, and drift eliminators. Inside the tower it should look clean, without significant signs of corrosion or algal growth, and no scale or other fouling on or within the visible sections of the pack. The water should be visibly clean, with minimal sediment in the pond, and the surfaces should not feel slimy. The water distribution system should be intact and clean. If the drift eliminators or pack show uneven discoloration or patches of moss, it suggests that there are faults within the tower which should be investigated. If you take a dip sample from the pond, it should be as far from the freshwater and biocide inlets as possible. If the only inspection hatch is located close to the freshwater inlet, ensure that fresh water is not entering when you take the sample. This should ensure your sample is representative of the tower water. Take photographs of where any samples are taken and the condition of the tower as evidence. Ideally, there should be a sample tap on the pipe returning the water to the tower distribution system. This is the water that's most likely to contain the Legionellae, as this is the warmest point. If not, there may be alternative sample taps as part of the dosing system or on the pond. You should take a post-flush sample. If the pressure is high, then water can come out in a spray. This could be controlled with a length of clean, sterile tubing on the tap to feed the sample into the bottle and by opening the valve only a minimal amount. Domestic hot and cold water systems are a potential cause of outbreaks. The larger and more complex the water distribution system, such as in hospitals and hotels, the more prone they are to colonisation. 
but even systems in private homes can be a source of infection too. Before sampling, examine the system from where water enters the building, working through the intermediate stages of tanks, water softeners and water heaters to the points of use. If a schematic is available, it could be used as a guide, but you will need to check that it is accurate. When monitoring or investigating hot and cold water systems, it is essential to measure and record the water temperature. If they can be accessed safely, you should examine inside water tanks and either take samples by using the dip method or by siphoning water out of the tank. The inside of the tank should not be dirty or excessively corroded and the water should be clear. Any obvious scum or film on the surface would indicate insufficient turnover of water. Ideally, there should be no more than 24 hours worth of stored water in any tank. The water temperature should be very close to the temperature of the incoming mains and below 20 degrees Celsius. It should be noted that some systems are directly fed off the mains and may not have any storage tanks. These items of plant are difficult to sample from directly. Water softeners are filled with a resin, but water samples can be taken from a sample point downstream. Similarly, expansion vessels may be plumbed into systems and may contain synthetic rubber bladders that could become colonised with Legionellae. Water samples can be collected from the drain valves where these are fitted. Care must be taken when sampling from pressurised systems. Legionellae in hot water systems are most commonly found at the bottom of a calorifier. Cold water entering at the bottom and hot leaving the top means there will be a zone of temperature ideal for growth of Legionellae. Sediment and scale may also build up, encouraging growth. Calorifiers should be fitted with anti-stratification pumps that run daily for one to two hours. This should raise the temperature at the bottom to 60 degrees Celsius to pasteurise the water. A sample collected from the drain valve of the calorifier will provide evidence of Legionellae within the calorifier, but specialist help may be needed. Increasingly, plate heat exchangers are used instead of calorifiers. While these are not a focus for growth, a hot water storage or buffer vessel installed with them can be. If a suitable drain valve is available, a post-flush sample should be collected. If undertaking routine monitoring, then you should select sample points that are representative of the hot and cold water systems. These are referred to as sentinel outlets and are normally the nearest and furthest from either a water heater or the cold water supply. Samples should be collected from outlets that have no blenders or thermostatic mixers on them. When investigating a case or outbreak, you should target the outlets each infected person has used or been exposed to. You should take pre-flush samples as the outlet itself may be colonised. Post-flush samples are usually only collected during follow-up investigations. Your temperature monitoring and review of any relevant paperwork on site should help to identify any cool parts of the hot water system and warm parts of the cold water system to enable you to further target your sampling. Spa pools are the third most common cause of Legionnaire's disease. The pool water is usually filtered and chemically disinfected because it's not drained, cleaned or refilled after each use. The water is at 30 to 40 degrees Celsius, which is ideal for Legionella growth. Bubbles are created by sucking air into jets or through a separate air blower system. Spa pools in commercial settings should be an overflow design with a balance tank, but pool designs and installations can vary greatly. Without careful management, spa pools can become heavily colonised with Legionellae. During an investigation, review the risk assessment, the schematic, the maintenance records and the monitoring results, both microbiological and chemical. Check how often the balance tank is cleaned and how often poolside monitoring is carried out. Before approaching the pool, ensure the air and water circulation is switched off to prevent aerosol generation. You should examine the immediate environment for any signs of poor maintenance and note the pool design and mode of operation. If a pool and overflow channel are present, check that they are clean. You may need to lift and look under the grill on the overflow channel. 
If access is possible, you should also inspect the pipework and look for any evidence of biofilm. Routine samples should be taken directly from the pool. In an outbreak investigation, you can also take swabs from behind air and water jets and any headrests that are present. If possible, you should open and examine the balance tank. The water in the tank should be clear with no obvious tide line. The balance tank is more likely to test positive for Legionella than the pool itself, so in outbreaks a dip sample must be taken. In addition to the main causes of outbreaks covered here, there are also many other potential sources. These will require individual assessment before you can take samples safely, but systems that are correctly risk assessed and well maintained should suppress the growth of Legionella so that there is no risk to health.